Hey y'all, so today we are continuing our lesson on integers, which you know is just a number on a number line in front or behind the zero. So it's a positive or a negative number, those are all integers. So what we're gonna do today is we're going to practice understanding integer opposites. Um, this one, I feel like this is also fairly easy, um, just as long as you're paying attention. And you know, if you have any questions, you can ask me. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna get started. If it works. Hello? Okay. All right, so um, before we do get started, if you look in Google Classroom, there is a document attached with this link and it is the same exact document. The only thing you don't have is a number line. Um, so if you want to split your screen and watch the video and fill in the document, you can uh, because you'll be able to type on this. So if you want to do that, by all means do that. If you rather print it off um, or if you just rather watch the video, that's okay too. Just as long as you are understanding what I am teaching. Okay. So if you look on here, the first thing we have is a nice little table. Um, this table gives us the gives us a set of numbers that they want us to find the opposite of, the opposite of the opposite of, and the opposite of the opposite of the opposite of. Now I know you're probably thinking, Miss Soda, what does that mean? Well, I'm gonna tell you what it means. Okay. Uh, so like I said, we're gonna use this number line. So I going to assume that my midpoint is this dash right here just by looking at it. So I'm going to put a zero here. And my first number they give us is seven. So I'm going to number the number line one through seven, starting on the positive side. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then what I do behind the zero, I want to do in front of the zero. So I want to have the same amount of numbers on the other side. So I'm going to go to negative 7. So I have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, and negative 7. So I'm going to plot positive 7. Now, positive 7 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 dashes away from the zero. So to figure out the opposite of that, we want to look at, okay, well, let's go to the other side of the zero and let's figure out which number is seven dashes away from there. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we look here, what is the opposite of seven? It is negative seven. So here I'm gonna put negative seven because negative seven is the opposite. Now we have this confusing one. It says, what is the opposite of the opposite? Like, what does that mean? So our number was seven, right? That was the number they gave us. They want us to, they want us to figure out the opposite of that, which was negative seven. So to find the opposite of the opposite, we're just gonna find the opposite of negative seven. So if I look back at my number line, well, the opposite of negative seven is going to be what? Positive seven. But then they give us the opposite of the opposite of the opposite. It's a lot of opposites. Um, so we're going to start from the number they gave us to begin with. They gave us a seven. The opposite of that was negative seven. Well, the opposite of negative seven was positive seven. So if I'm the opposite of the opposite of the opposite, we just find the opposite of, of this seven right here. So that's going to be, if I go back to my number line, the opposite of positive seven is negative seven. So I know you're probably thinking, some of you, oh, drop my pen. Some of you are probably thinking, oh, I get it, that makes complete sense. Some of you are probably like, oh my God, what does this mean? It's okay if you feel both. If you're like, oh, I get it, awesome. If you're like, oh my God, what does this mean? 
That's okay, because I'm gonna do some more. All right, so I'm gonna do number, I'm gonna do now 25. So I'm gonna erase my number line. And again, I'm gonna assume my midpoint is right here. I could be wrong, but it's fine. Now that gives me 25. Do you think 20, do you think I have enough dashes to do one through 25? No, I don't. So I'm gonna count by another interval besides one to be able to complete my number line. So since it's 25, I'm gonna count by fives on both sides. So I have zero. I'm gonna count by five. So I have five, 10, 15, 20, 25. What I do on one side of the zero, I wanna to do to the other side of the zero. So I have negative five, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20, and negative 25. So again, I'm going to plot positive 25. So like how we did on the last problem, the opposite of positive 25 is going to be the number that's on, that is the same distance from the zero on the other side. So if I look here and I count how many tack or how many ticks 25 is away from zero, just on my number line, it is one, two, three, four, five ticks away. So I want to look for a number that's five ticks away on the other side. So I have one, two, three, four, five. So that means the opposite of 25 is going to be what? If you're saying negative 25, you are right. The opposite of positive 25 is negative 25. So again, we're going to, we have to figure out the opposite of the opposite. So we're going to do kind of like how we did at the top, where we're going to find, for to find the opposite of the opposite, we need to find the opposite of negative 25, because that's going to give me my number. So if I go to negative 25, and I go back to the other side of the number line, what number is the opposite of negative 25? Positive 25. So positive 25 is gonna go right here. But now we have that other one where it says the opposite of the opposite of the opposite. So like how we did at the top, to find the opposite of the opposite of the opposite, we wanna find the opposite of 25 because 25 is the opposite of this number which is the opposite of this number. That's where all the opposites come from. So if I go back to 25 and I go to the opposite of it, what number is that? Negative 25. So if you haven't noticed, there is a pattern. If we start with a positive number, the opposite of the positive is always going to be a negative number. So if you want to write this down somewhere or just put it in your memory, uh, I'm going to put opposite of positive is always negative. So again, when, we, when you have a positive number, the opposite of that is going to be a negative every single time, okay? So now we're, now we're gonna focus, at, uh, focus on, I'll say focus at. Now we're gonna focus on if we start with a negative number. So I'm going to erase what I have on my number line. And I'm going to, again, assume that this is my midpoint. No one stop. Okay. I'm going to assume that this is my midpoint. So I have negative nine, so I'll count by ones. So I have one, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine. And remember, what I do on one side of the number line, I want to do on the other side. Because I want to have the same amount of numbers on each side of the number line when I'm working with this. So I have negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, and negative 9. Oh, wow, Soto, that really was the midpoint. Ha, huh, look at me. Sorry, I got excited. Okay, <laughs> so now we are given negative 9. So I'm going to plot my negative 9. Now we want to find out the opposite of negative 9. So we're going to work this just like we did the other two. We want to find the same number that is, or the number that is the same distance away from zero, but on the other side of the number line. So if I start from zero and I count how far negative nine is, it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine places away from the zero. So if I start from zero on this side and count how many numbers, or count how many, count nine ticks, and figure out which number is nine six away from zero, that's gonna give me the opposite of negative nine. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that means the opposite of negative nine is what? Positive nine. So I'm just gonna write a nine. If you wanna put a plus sign in front of it, you can, but you don't always have to, not with this. So, our opposite of negative 9 is positive 9. But now, I have that opposite of the opposite again. So, just like how we did on the last two, to figure out the opposite of the opposite, we're going to just find the opposite of the number we just put in our table. So, if we look at positive 9, what did we say the opposite of that is? That's going to be negative 9. And then to find the opposite of the opposite of the opposite, that means we need to find the opposite of this last number we just found. So the opposite of the opposite of the opposite, okay, so we have negative 9. We want to find the opposite of this again. So what is the opposite of negative 9? Positive 9. Some of you by now may be catching a pattern, maybe figure it out in your heads, which is amazing. Some of you may not, and that's okay, because I'm going to do the last two, and you're going to get it. I know you are. I believe in you. <laughs> 